Now, listen, listen, the techniques that I'm showing you right now have been tested and proven already. So you don't have to. I know people be like, man, did you know it worked? It works, bro. Like, I, I do this, like, for real. So first thing you're going to do is set your moving averages, 200-day moving average, 65-day moving average, and the nine-day moving average is the only new moving average you're going to have to use. Now, the two main moving averages you're going to use is the nine-day and the 65. The 200-day moving average is a, is a great point of either a reversal or a breakdown. So that's going to always be there and be valid. But the reason I'm saying use nothing but the 65 and the nine, because th these are going to be your support and resistances. Um, so you can look on my screen right now. This is SPY. The green line is the 65 day moving average. And the blue line is the nine day moving average. All you're going to do on the weekly all you're going to do, and every time, after every night, you can set this, this setup up, and you can make a trade every day off of SPY. You can do a day trade every day. It don't matter. Um, and that's how I know that this, I'm telling y'all, this is this is an everyday setup. Every time you come to SPY, this is what you're going to do. Go to the one week. Your blue line is the nine-day moving average. All you're going to do is put your horizontal right at the tip of that moving average. Boom. That's your support. Watch. Watch. Be be watch. It's, it's, it's your support slash resistance. Be patient. Then you go for the green line. You go to the 65-day moving average. That's your resistance. From there, the three time frames that you're going to use during this technique is the one week, four hour in the 15 minute time frame you go to the four hour chart guess what you do the same exact thing but you're only using the 65 and the nine day moving average now you see the 200 day moving average sitting up here you see that right so you know we're still going to do the same thing right change the size of this boom bust it there you got 65 day moving average here you got the, the nine day moving average here. Now, it seemed like it just, just bear with me. We're almost there. Go down to the 15 minute time frame. This is your resistance going into the week. We got 403.89. You got 395.08. You got 390. And you got 386. You got a gap. You still got to go through your same basic rules of gaps, um, you know, trend lines, you know, find out, you know, what's the trend during this time. We know it's bearish according to the one week. Um, the trend is super bearish, super bearish. So, boom. The expectation for the upside, this is your setup. We have to break above the 386.05 and our target will be 390. Your confirmation about a 390 call, and you could do this for day trading. Your, your confirmation for getting a 390 call is above 386. As soon as price action get above 386, you're going to get a 390 call. Now, because the moving average is above um, the price action, so you don't have uh, moving averages below the price action, that's when you just put down your bottom support, which is your breaking point for more downside. You have to add this in, you know, using the, the candles. So, boom, that's your bottom line. That's your red line is let's get put. We're going down further. I already put the plan out. You know what I mean? Of course, and I did the same setup on, on the plan that I'm doing right now for you. Um, And then, boom, that's your setup going into the week on SPY. You can do this. Hey, Yes. Sorry, brother. Um, you did the four hour, the nine day, and the 65. What was the first chart you marked? That was the one week. The one week. Yeah, one week. All right, thank you. Now, this is a day trade setup with a, a swing trade possibility. The reason I say that is we know the day trade is going to come. Now, the Either you're going to buy in on the day trade at 381, which is support, 
and this is what's crazy. On, and I'm not trying to sidetrack. It's going to be a lot of conversation. On Friday at 2.30, SPY was at 381. The 384 cost was 15 cents for the day trade. When the bullish engulfing came and we broke back above the nine-day moving average, look exactly where it ran up to. This is the 15-minute chart. It went and touched just a little bit close to the 65-day moving average. Once the price action got to 384, the 384 call at 381 was 15 cents on Friday at 2.30. By the time it hit 384, there was $200. This is why this setup is, is very valuable. There's two times in the market where you're going to see direction, and then lunchtime, we know we're going to get a consolidation. This is why you got to utilize every tool in your arsenal when you come down to trading. It's not just one way you can trade. You got to use everything. If you really want to do this, you got to use every tool that you learn coming from out of here. Here go your small area of consolidation, which was the slow, you know, lunchtime section. Here go that first morning spike going towards that blue line. Don't forget, I put the blue line in on the four hour. This skinny blue line is the four hour charts blue line. Look where it's hitting at on the 15th. Directly where we want it. 10 o'clock rule. Big bearish candle came right down to 381, small area consolidation. Once 230 hit, we start seeing another move. That tells me that the market, the window to buy in the, this type of time and the environment that we get in, once the market show you a direction, you got day trade possibility from 930, and we're going to have to ba uh, balance out when you're going to use that 10, uh, 10 o'clock rule. Because them spikes in the first thing in the morning has been crazy. Um, you gonna this is the first until this is all the way to eleven fifteen, and then once eleven fifteen hit, it gave you that smaller area of downside a little bit more. But notice that the movement came between nine thirty and eleven o'clock. That's when the, the 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 most movement of the market really came until two thirty. When two thirty came, we had another anomaly and seen a, a big move of 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 direction at 230 right we all knew that the rsi on the four hour was extremely low you feel me here go the rsi on the four hour how do i know tomorrow that more than likely this is going to go to the 386 two reasons we got gaps and we got a low rsi on the four hour and we got a reversal candle. Let's delete this real quick. This is why I put this all in the notes when I posted it in the uh, trade ideas area. Read my notes. We got a reversal candle on the four hour. This is a sign of reversal also. And we got a low RSI and we got two gaps. If if we don't gap up first thing in the morning or if we don't see a move toward 386, I'm not good at my job. I believe that we're going to have a, a strong move towards 386 first thing tomorrow. And if we break 386, and this may happen in pre-market, and that's the tricky part about it, that pre-market been showing us a direction, and we got to utilize that also. We may have a move toward 386. That's going to allow us to get a 390 day trade going into um, tomorrow. Now, yes, there's a possibility that we may get up here to 386 and fail and come back down 381. That's always in the possibility. But just make sure that we're noticing that 386. Make sure we got our alert set at that 386, but that's going to be the first goal that we got to get to before we get to that 390. Okay? Anybody got questions so far? Oh, yeah, quiet today. Now, I know it ain't a lot of people in here. Now, just us. Now, we can talk. Hey, Dave. Yeah. What's up? Sorry, man. I did want to say something that um, recently has really helped me out is um, when you mentioned just the daily candles and the weekly candles, yeah. looking at, you know, where the previous day or where the previous week has, you know, has ended, um, has really, really, really helped me set my trades apart. Oh, yeah, being able to sure. forecast because when it, I mean, when it, when that daily candle closes above the previous one, it, it's a lot easier to read and for, you know, Project what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, facts, 100%. 100%. When that daily candle close above, you know, the next day, we're going to go down. If we're below that price range, we're going down. That's why I say um, if you're using, you know, the four-hour, the one-week, or the day, 
if we close above a resistance, you know the retest coming. So if tomorrow the daily candle closes above 386, we know 390 is coming. You feel me? We we should be able to pull off a, a swing trade. Now, if, if that whole move happened all in one day, okay, boom, we did good on that. But if we if 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 all else fails and it's a slow day tomorrow, but we do close above 386, we definitely gonna go for that 390 push back for that retest. But you're 100 percent correct. Correct. When you look at that daily chart, depending on where that daily closes at, it definitely shows you direction. But look at all them gaps. The gaps really showed on the daily. Like that's when the real gaps is really there. But yeah. Yeah, that definitely is true. Anybody else? And this is how I started when I found the gaps. I look at the daily chart and set my gaps. So if you guys, you know, once you read through that, that, that um the notes, that's how I set my gaps up. I use the daily chart. <clears throat> Anybody else got questions? Or oh, you got straight on that? And that's just a small piece of the technique. Use it. Let me know what you think about it. And if you like it better than quadrant lines, go with it. But you notice that you can set your support and resistances up, big time frames, big results, and still get money off of it using a 15-minute time frame. Um, the next one that we want to talk about What else I put up here? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I got so many ideas, man. I I I put I'll post a cat just to show you guys the consolidation and show you how easy a consolidation trade. Now, if spy don't give me what I want, and if I don't, you know, if spy don't go nowhere, or either way, I got a plan for spy up and down. We see that. You feel what I'm saying? I say if it breaks below the 381 level, you can get a 375 put. You can ride that down to the 377, 373, and the 370. Um, or if it breaks back up, our ideal is getting a 390 call uh, or a 395 going towards the, 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 20, the 22nd. Um, and that's, you know, that's according to the plan. If things move accordingly, we should be able to make money either way it go because the plan is already set. Um, CAT, all I was noticing with CAT is the consolidation. This is the easiest setup that you can you can make money off of, in my opinion. Cat is usually a big move in the beginning of the year. Um, just go back on the monthly chart. Look how far cat has came so far. Um, came down to as low as look, these moving averages are so powerful. Utilize those moving averages. 65-day moving average bounce um back in September. And right when October came, cat went from 167 all the way up to $218. Now we're starting to see a consolidation after that huge move. In my opinion, and this is what, you know, I love consolidations because it definitely, you know, showed you something different. Confirmation for a breakout is above 390, uh, 339, but my idea is do like a 245 call. I mean, once we get above 380, um, 238 and 239, do a 245, see how it go. But um, it's definitely in that long consolidation time frame. And I, I'm not trying to, this ain't one of the ones where I'm rushing to do this one. I'm just noticing what's out there. You feel me? There's a lot of great setups out there. If you just go through them, you'll definitely find a few of them. Um, here go Apple. Same thing with Apple. Now, you can use the moving average stuff with Apple and stuff, but I used it for SPY uh, last week, Monday, and it worked perfectly. I mean, perfectly. I mean, to the T. When I tell you it worked perfectly, bro, it worked perfectly. That. That setup for SPY going into Monday this week was amazing. Um, and that's what made me be like, let me hurry up and tell these guys and um, and let them know, look, man, this is a crazy setup. Especially when the price get above the price action. It really makes it move like it's supposed to. But if it don't... Hey, it, Dave. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're straight. I was just going to say, can you speak to at some point during the live, um, you know, when we're talking about ETFs like SPY, if if some of those plays, because the ETF, you know, it tends to be a higher price, obviously. But yeah, if you start seeing a trend go one way or another, you can also pick individual stocks within that fund to trade in that may be a little bit cheaper and plays for you to get in. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's true, too. And another thing is, um, if you don't feel comfortable with the price range of the contracts, 
always, and then let's go back to spy real quick. And I'm glad you said that. If you don't feel comfortable at doing the day trades, but look, don't forget, spy got an everyday day trade, you know, situation going on right now. You could day trade spy with same day expiration dates, Monday through Friday now. So the price is, is if you catch it at the right time, you can get that 18 cents to 200 that I was explaining when uh, SPY came down to 381. Um, but yes, if you're not comfortable at trading SPY, what's been crazy is that, you know, some days Microsoft moves, some days Apple been moving, it's been off and on. So it's kind of, you know, pick your poison, but you definitely can, you know, capitalize off of Apple, Microsoft and everything. Here go another thing I want you guys to pay attention to. And this is what this is going to be the vocal point of for most traders going into this year is the weekly and the monthly charts. These are going to be the, the 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 most paid attention charts going into this week. And what's crazy is I posted this chart last week and all we had to do, I posted this chart when the, when the price was at 400 and some change. Um, All you got to do is get a put. Every time SPY came and hit the top of this trend line, it just dropped down drastically. Every time. It, it did it for this the fourth time. So that's why the SPY, the SPY setup is a day trade setup because of the gaps. It's not a, a long hold setup. You know what I mean? It's a day trade setup. Now, if that put kick in, that's why I changed the expiration date for that put. If it continue to drop, which it looks like, you, you see how it hit on the top of that trend line. We should be able to see 350, 357, you know, by March, May, or June. You feel what I'm saying? We should be down at that point um, for sure because of the way the trend line has been so respected um, going into this year. And this is the top from last year all the way to now. We've been on a straight down trend. The reason I say this is the most watched uh, time frame going into this year because once this trend line break, you're talking about, you know, at least a year worth of run up, I believe that's going to come. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and I think that's the anticipation that most people are paying attention to because if the analysts are saying, yeah, man, it's going to be a recession in 2023, um, that means, you know, most people are paying attention to these bigger time frames to see how low the price go where they can hop on and make a lot of money for that run up going into 2024. They only said it's going to be a recession the first half of 2023, which is only six months. The same thing we already seen, you know, this right here happened um, for the first six months of this year. So, you know, it's the same type of idea. This the first six months right there, right? This is when we put out the calls, and this is the little small three-month run-up that we got all the way to August 15th. I mean, it's the same idea going into this year. We're, we're seeing the downside. Here go a little earning spike right here. You got a little earning spike, bullish and golfing. Then we see another breakdown. Look for the same pattern going into this year. Now, I mean, trust me, look for, be patient. If you need to save your money up until June, save your money up till June because the big trades is going to start rolling in around June, July, the same thing in the summer. Trust me. They're, 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 they think they slick, but we all, we caught on to that game. Same thing happened in the pandemic. Here you go all the way to the, the March. Here you go that huge recovery from March all the way into 2001. You feel me? Look at that huge recovery. I'm, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait and see if that price come down. If your spy come down to the 330s, 340s, yeah, we definitely gonna have to, you know, load up there and and see how things go. So, anybody got a question about that? So here go Apple. Apple sitting at one thirty four. The bottom of Apple is still one thirty one thirty six. Now, I mean, we we here go that June. Remember that June spike. Now we're down almost to that price range again. Pay attention for Apple to have a downside for earnings. Um, you may be able to get away with a 115, a 120 put. Write this down. 120 put. 120 put. I, I gotta get my uh hold up, wait up, right now. 
I just came back from a birthday party too, dude. I'll be I'll be so busy sometimes, be crazy, bro. I ran in the house like I gotta do my live. I gotta do live, bro. Like we can't play no more. Um now this is the tricky part. Do you get a 120 put for June or do you get a 120 put for March? Which which date do you think is gonna be more potent? June, but it's going to be expensive. It's going to be expensive. And they only got June 2024. Is that, oh, no, here you go, right here. Boom, I was in the wrong date. My bad. June's is going to be expensive. You're 100% correct. Um, Midway June for the 120 put got 17,000 open interest and they cost $700. Um, but the way you beat that, that, the reason I say add it to your watch list, because if Apple go green, um, in January, before their earnings, on that green date, so their earnings is on the 25th through the 30th of January. The reason that you're adding this to your, your watch list now, because if we see a green move in January, that's when you start grabbing your June puts. We all know historically that, that tech the tech companies do not move in um, the beginning of the year. They're more of a summer move. Uh, end of the year moves. You feel me? So we already know that tech is going to fall off. They're already pre-predicting a recession. So if you see in January any type of spike, knowing that their earnings is coming three weeks, you know, into the into the month, um, January twenty fifth, we need to start preparing ourselves to get long puts or either do a next day swing put. But the idea is that I, I believe the Apple's going to hit 120 if we break below through 131. And I believe it's going to happen um, around earnings time. Now, if, if you know, again, it's, it's a slow time of the year, which is the, with the end of the year coming now, uh, first of the month vibes may be the same. It may give you a little bit of relief bounce. Um, you may be able to get that 120 put if price runs back up to 155. You, it may go test that top 10 line on Apple. You may be able to get that one 120 put up here better than being down here with it, right? So you add it to your list just because you're preparing yourself for the possibilities of what's going to ha what's going to happen next year. If you're, they're already forecasting a recession first six months, we need to prepare for that. We need to prepare for that. So every stock other than, you know, some of the dividend stocks, oil, um, cat, you know, some of those, but I know tech is going to probably fall. Tech is the one that's really, you know, carry the market. So if, if, you know, Apple get hit hard, man, it's going to make a lot of people, a lot of money. You know what I mean? So pay attention to that for sure. How far down you think spy comes? Oh, let's go look at spy. And I'm using what I'm using. Um, for I think 330, guys. I think um we're gonna go back to 2020 resistance. So this 2020 resistance here is 337. Now I mean I believe we're gonna get into that range. Uh let me highlight the consolidation area on the weekly. This was that small consolidation here at when it was fighting the resistance right there. So I, I expect to kind of get into that range where I just put that square at. So let me slide that over. I expect to get right into this range right here. And you already see the wick, the bottom wick already touched within that area right now. You know what I mean? Like at the bottom of uh, October, October 10th, look where that wick hit. It hit literally the bottom of that square. I think we're going to hit right there again. And then that's when I may expect some more downside within this uh, range right here. Um, So, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. And that's around, that's between 350 all the way down to 325. And I, I think we talked about this, you know, last year, um, in the beginning of this year also, when we've seen that downside, people say, how far do you think it's going to come? I've, uh, if this recession posed to hit this year, I think we coming down to this range right here. And that's going to be your range. That's going to be the area that we got to watch. Especially if we break that 200-day moving average. If we break below um, 380, 369, 370, 
Yeah, we definitely kind of going to see 350. Anybody else got a question about Apple or Spy? So, <clears throat> what else we got going on, man? It's a lot. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, Microsoft, SQQQ, Disney, Uber. Um, I'll probably set those charts and put them in there just to start off. I really don't want to go and break down every single one because they're mostly tech stocks and they all move the same. Um, I will talk about Disney though, because I really like I like Disney. It's at ninety dollars. So here go Disney. Um, I really ain't got a setup for Disney. I just had a lot of different consolidations. I put in a lot of different quadrant lines in here, just trying to figure out their zones. Um, but we're back at that bottom price range, eighty nine to ninety dollars. If we don't hold this here now, we're definitely going to see some downside. Um, but I expect Disney to bounce back for the holidays because Disney has a lot of things going on for the holidays. Um, and this is back in 2016 price range. Disney is already back at um, pandemic price. Disney is already back at pandemic price. So if we don't hold this area here, you can expect it to drop to $78, you know, $80. You know, we may still be going down to 2015, 2014 prices. So this is a crazy look for Disney. I need people to, you know, again, long-term shares is ideal. But seeing this at 80 and $90 is crazy. The, the market is going to recover, guys. This is not going to be, you know, like this forever. So we got to plan for the recovery. And that's what I want to do. And that's that's pretty much it, man. I really want to just come in and touch bases with you guys. Um, anybody using TD Ameritrade going to this year? If you're not using TD Ameritrade, I suggest um, using TD Ameritrade. They got a whole bunch of tricks and, and neat things that you can do with your charting and, and with your you know execution of co contracts. It's so easy and convenient. It's crazy. Um, I've I've I mean it's really really simple. It's not even hard at all. So it, just a suggestion. You know what I mean if you feel like you want to you know get into TD, TD is a great platform you can use. Um, but I really want to come in just to talk to you guys, see how you guys are feeling. Any comments? I know we lost Ken. Ken, if you don't know about Ken, kids, Ken owned multiple businesses, so he's super busy all the time. You know what I mean? So, you know, he definitely had to weigh out his options, and, you know, he weighed out, you know, he don't want to do doing numbers no more. I'm not mad. I respect it. So we definitely have to, you know, move on without him, so... He's a big part of doing numbers, and I am definitely going to miss him. But got to do what we got to do, guys. Anybody else got questions or anything? And I'm making it short and sweet. I'm not trying to do nothing, uh, extend my time here. I'm really trying to see how this week go. And I, I'm, I'm really ready to prepare for next year, man. Next year is going to be such a crucial year. Knowing that the stock market is on the discount, knowing that the opportunity is there to make a lot of money, I'm definitely preparing myself for next year. So I'm excited. Uh, could you post a link to the TD Ameritrade so you can get the referral? I don't think they do that. Do they do that? Oh, not that I know of. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think they do that. Um, okay. Yeah, I can go look real quick. Y'all going to see my account, guys. Please. It's nothing big, guys. Just, you know, I should, you know, I usually don't show people my money. I don't like doing that because I don't want people to be like, oh man, you know, it's like it's not, it's not, it's not a big deal for me. My mind frame be on the bigger goal. It's never about, you know, the small stuff. Hold on, where is it at? Dave, appreciate you, man. I got to run. Looking forward to this year. Next no, year. no, do your thing. I'll have me, my boy. All right, here, let me see if I got it. I don't think I got it.
Referral. Oh yeah, I do got a referral friend. Okay. Yeah. You can refer one person. You may not refer yourself. Da, da, da. I gotta type your name in with your email. Want me to do it? Yeah. Uh what's your full name? Uh Randy. Yes, sir. First name. Yeah. Last name. Uh M C C R A Y. Lowercase C. Capital C. I want to spell it right. Like it looked on the ID. <laughs> R A Y. And what's your email? Uh R M R M C C C C R A Y R A Y One Three One Three at Yahoo.com. Yahoo.com. Okay, perfect. Boom. All right, okay. Yep, I sent your email. You should have got an email. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so this is the account I'm going to be trading off of, but I'm not going to be using this website. They got a Thinkorswim app that I'm going to be using. So, yeah, <laughs> my my career is a full-time trader, guys. I am not a worker, bro. Like, <laughs> I mean, I am not a worker. I am a full-time trader for life. So that's going to be the journey for that. I'm, this is me now, guys. I'm never, I'm never thinking about nothing else but this so it's one of them ones um but yeah if y'all have any more questions be prepared for next year i really want to touch bases for the years out i know it's under you know different circumstances knowing that we lost ken um but i really appreciate everybody for joining i really encourage everybody to, to stay locked in with me um the reason i'm doing everything for free because I want to get back into what, what I used to do. I used to do everything for free. I used to do lives all the time. I want to bring back that energy of people being excited to learn. So I'm definitely, you know, preparing myself for next year to teach you guys as much as possible. And so we can get through the trading year with success. So we can have real success stories, have some real things that we can pass down to our children and our kids, and we can just grow, grow our business and grow our community as big as possible. So um, if you have, if you feel like inviting your friends, please do let them know that it's going to be free forever. You know, I'm not charging nothing, but if you're willing to learn, I'm willing to teach. So that's all I got to say, guys. All love. God bless y'all. I love you.